just like the conversation in Sullivan Taylor, but with microphones this time. <laughs> Hi, this is Gordon, your host for the podcast titled Punk Sociology. And I'm Caden Green, the co-host for today. So today's topic is growing up finding happiness and tensions in Midwest Illinois. Um, to this lineup, we have many people in the studio offered uh, by Lucy. These people are some of the happiest teenagers I've seen <laughs> <laughs> uh, almost in my life, at least on the surface. Yeah, uh, there we go. Yeah, and at least in Sullivan Taylor, they look uh, very happy. One of them has worked at Sullivan Taylor, while others were sitting and talking at a counter while she works. <laughs> I also see them in town parades. In band camp, yeah, yeah marching, band. marching band, marching bands. I've learned that they do a lot of school activities together. Let us hear from them saying their names. All right, I'm Jane Hoster, and I'm a senior at Macomb High School. Uh, I'm Lucy Greedle, and I'm also a senior at Macomb High School. And I'm Carter Benson, um, also a senior <laughs> at Macomb High School. <laughs> and then I'm Caden Green, same. We're all seniors. Uh, and they're all brought up in the Midwest, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. right? yep. mm -hmm. Born and raised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from a previous episode, our guests have discussed in various ways that for people who grow up into their 20s, often they want to get out of the Midwest environment. They even feel like they're in a limbo state if they cannot leave successfully. This prompts a further reflection on what makes people feel happy or experience tensions with this environment. This episode has a simple structure. Each person will take turn name one source of happiness and a group will share additional insight. Then each person will take turn to name one source of tension and the group will respond to that. So let's start. Let's name one source of happiness. Who wants to volunteer first? I'll go first. So for me, I play soccer and I've played soccer for a really long time. And it didn't always used to be a source of happiness. Like, when I was really young, my parents liked to tell me and remind me often that I like to sit down in a corner and cry on the field. Uh, <laughs> but they made me stick with it, and I'm glad they did, because now it's one of my true greatest passions. And uh, next fall, I'm going to be playing college soccer for whichever college I decide to go to. Uh, what kind, I don't know, what is your role in a the, in the soccer team? Uh, I play goalkeeper. I've played uh, goalkeeper since 8th grade, so um, I'm the one who stops the shots. <laughs> I started varsity my all the way from my freshman year all the way up to senior year, um, so I've gotten a lot of experience that way. And then, like, how's your role on the team? So you being a senior, and have you always been, like, a leader? Because as a senior, you're yeah. kind of well, automatically a leader. Yeah, as far as the leadership roles go in soccer, goalkeeper is probably the main one. And I've been a captain since uh, my junior and senior year, and so that's kind of helped. But I mean, as a freshman, I was kind of intimidated by the older kids, so I didn't feel like I had quite a place on the team, so my leadership was a little lacking there. But And now you're the older kid. As, as an upperclassman, it's definitely been a lot more about the leadership. So that you mentioned that when you play sports, there's a difference when you first get into the sport because you were just a new person and then but as you advance in your sports in that team environment it, this is for the group to think about mm -hmm. is it really just the activity of the sports or is it that you take on a different role maybe you you become a different figure in the team maybe you're really becoming what you're good at so that you did not you were not that happy when you first joined right and yeah. then you became much happier I went through basically three stages, like the first beginning stage was, you know, me learning how to play and it just, I didn't really like it because it was all confusing and new and, you know, a bunch of people were better. And then the next stage was kind of like, all right, well, I play soccer, but it's not my favorite thing in the world. It was kind of like a chore going to practice. But then as I became a lot better and more confident, it's not so much a chore anymore and it's something I look forward to doing. And if I'm having a bad day and then I go to the soccer practice, like, it's like a fresh start and it makes me feel better. Mm -hmm. How and good are you <laughs> <laughs> at goalkeeping? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm all right. Um, I, I mean, I've been, <laughs> I've, been, I've been scouted by quite a few coaches and I have roster spots at, I want to say, five Division three colleges and then one Division one college. So. Mm -hmm. And Jaren, kind of back to like how you said it started off as kind of like a chore. And like that's a lot of times how a lot of sports started out because that's how it was for me with wrestling. You go and you work really hard every day at practice and you kind of get burnt out. 
but then, you know, coming up to my junior year, it was a similar situation. It became something that I really looked forward to at the end of the day, going and working out and just having a good time. You also get like a reward from like finishing a practice or finishing a really hard workout, but it's also like a reward with your team that you did it all together. And being with your team kind of helps build you up. And, you know, each one, each, every person in the team kind of like supports each other to be successful and finish it together. I think it's also something to do with the consistency, like you know you're going to get the same group of people every day and you're going to be doing pretty much the same thing, so you can like look forward to that. Yeah, and you build a pretty like tight bond with the, like, the people that are around you and in that sport. There's people that outside of the sport, you're not really, you don't hang out with that much, but then you go and you go to practice or you go, you have your games or whatever. Lucy, I know that you played tennis and so how was your experience with that? I really enjoyed it the whole team aspect of it because there were a lot of girls that were really that helped bond everyone together and they really worked on bonding the freshmen and the underclassmen mm -hmm. with the upperclassmen so it really felt like a team and community just like a little one that we mm -hmm. all had that's special to us and the fact that the team was like a lot smaller there wasn't like a huge varsity team and a huge JV team it was just like 14 to 16 girls and that was it and so it was nice when it was just like us and the coach and there wasn't that many people yeah, involved. And you get to like form those close bonds. With yeah, people. yeah. Yeah. And so Jane, we, me and Lucy kind of forced you to do that. We, yes. There, there were bets involved and, <laughs> and you, you reluctantly ended up joining, but from what I can tell, you ended up liking it a lot. So what, yeah. kind, of, what kind of bets? A long time ago, like way before you know, the school year would have started, I bet Jane lunch that she wouldn't <laughs> that she wouldn't play tennis because I, I thought there was no way that she would ever do it yeah I didn't think mm -hmm. she'd follow through and, so, and I didn't I almost didn't yeah and I told you guys that I wasn't and then we ended up <laughs> and you you hard, hardcore pressuring yeah. her to do it yeah. and it and it worked and she ended up really enjoying it just like we told her she would <laughs> <laughs> give me details what do you mean by hardcore pressuring oh she would just see she said I don't that guys I don't think I want to play tennis and I'm like no Jane we want you to do this you're gonna regret it if you don't because you know if you because she hadn't played a sport in high school I was until really this nervous year. to join so she was really nervous about joining in something her senior year being really bad at it and not wanting to do it and then uh, yeah. I did something similar I would I played football my senior year for whatever reason uh, <laughs> because, you know, the coach wanted me to and he said, come play football and I played it and I actually ended up enjoying it. And so I kind of used that as Jane because for the summer stuff for football, I went and I played football over the summer a little bit and I liked it. And so I said to Jane, well, I did something new that I was horrible at and had no idea what I was doing in. So you'll probably do the same thing and you, I feel like you would really enjoy it. And so it was kind of like that, uh, kind of a pressure. Well, I do notice that Lucy is actually a very famous uh, tennis player in town, <laughs> <laughs> whereas Jane is a new person, right? Yeah. So is your happiness the same kind of happiness? Can I don't know how good is Lucy at, at playing <laughs> tennis? She played varsity. Yeah, you played varsity. What? When did you start playing varsity? Like, when did you? Did you ever play JV tennis, or was it? Did I you was play JV. So varsity is uh, top six players, and I was number eight my freshman year, and so I was five or six my sophomore year, and I played on varsity doubles and singles. And then I had an ACL injury, so I didn't play at all junior year. I was the manager. And then my senior year, I was number two for most of the season until I stopped playing again because of injuries. And you gain happiness from, even though you're injured, you're still happy. Yeah, mostly. Mm -hmm. I think at the end there was some burnout, but like the, the team, the team aspect of it still kind of kept me in it. Because of the people, I still wanted to participate in the sport generally even though you were kind of like sick of the going to practice every day kind of a thing. Yeah. Especially when you're injured, it's not fun. Yeah, absolutely. I think during the time where I was a manager, I had more time to do other things. Mm -hmm. I, so I found happiness in other things where I kind of branched out more because uh, an injury happened. So because of the injury, I could, I found new things, but I also still enjoyed tennis. Just there were other things that I thought were more interesting to me in this time. Maybe you were sick of winning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Ha did you run into a certain limit in tennis? And this same goes for Carter. Like, do you feel like something is stopping you after a certain point of development in sports? Oh, uh, what do you mean by that? I'm just in, I'm just watching cartoons and animes on tennis and soccer, right? So that if you are playing in a town where no one is doing new things. Mm -hmm. and you're already sort of the top and then then there may not be the same level of challenge 
Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as I won the varsity spot my freshman year, I've been the only goalkeeper, which is not always a good thing. Like, if I get injured, um, <laughs> there wasn't a really sturdy backup until this year when someone new moved in. Who, he was actually there freshman year, but he moved back in and he played a little bit of goalkeeper where he was. But other than that, there was really no one. So it was nice that I didn't have to like really work hard for my position, but then also I didn't have to work hard for my position, so I wasn't getting as good. I wasn't being challenged, really. Like you weren't improving over the course of I wasn't improving as much as, career. yeah. It, a lot of the motivation had to be intrinsic. I mean, it didn't come from outside. Have, uh, do you play outside of school, like against other people? against other schools have you run into situations where you feel like other people are way better than what macomb high oh absolutely did? yeah yeah mm -hmm. and almost every sport we have like there's kind of that saying like there's always going to be someone better than you and you can you know whether you want to believe that's true or not that's not the point it's that like we go against a lot of bigger schools sometimes mm -hmm. and so there's going to be a lot more people and there's going to be a lot better people as well uh, like around here there's Quincy like Q and D they've always been good at like tennis they have a really good tennis team and they have a really good football team and a whole, you know a whole bunch of other stuff that's mm -hmm. you know they're, they're a lot better and so it's kind of frustrating whenever you're put in that yeah. situation where you there's no possible way for you to succeed with bigger <laughs> cities comes like more opportunities mm -hmm. like they have clubs for all their sports like tennis and soccer and, right. and they have many more sports so they can play general. that sport year round rather than uh -huh. So and that's I guess that's kind of what's nice about having small town like rural sports. You get to choose like you don't have to choose one sport to play. Like in most bigger cities, like you're not gonna be able to play on the football team, the wrestling team, the tennis team, and the soccer team or whatever. Right. Like you, here in Macomb in a small town and all the small towns around here, there's you know a lot of two or three sport athletes, and that's something that we're really fortunate to have here is that we can have these opportunities to have more experiences rather than playing one sport the whole time. Yeah, so it's not about specialization, but it's much more about breadth. So that Lucy was saying that uh, she she got into other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. other things got into her attention exactly. because when I watch these uh, animations, someone hit a tennis ball that looked like five balls. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like when, when you surf, mm -hmm. and yeah. then if your town, no one could ever catch that ball, then it's not fun after a while. But then in those animations, usually you run up with someone who yeah. could actually catch it. <laughs> then it will prompt you to develop better. So that, right. that's what I mean by specialization. Mm -hmm. And that takes a lot of time for people to work on their craft. Yeah, absolutely. And that can absorb their attention in a way that creates happiness because mm -hmm. of how difficult. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're really committed to something like that, like Carter, you don't play any other sports other than soccer. Yeah, I used to. But then once I started concentrating on soccer, like I, if I wanted to play club, which we don't have a club team in Macomb because it's too small, but that's why I go to Quincy. But anyways, like if I wanted to spend all my time on soccer, then I had to give up basketball and baseball right. and those things. And that's, you know, slightly different experience than us three. And Jane's a part of the musical and the theater program at Macomb High School. Lucy has her photography business and stuff like that. And so those are things that take away from the focus of, you know, your sport or whatever it is that you want to focus on. And mm -hmm. so it's, you know, it can go one of two ways. You can either decide to, you know, spread out and experience as much as you want, or you find that one thing that you really enjoy, and then you get as good as you can at it. Just like Carter did, he did, you know, he got really good at soccer and he played soccer all four years of high school. And he's, you know, he just finished up his fourth year of high school soccer and, you know, fairly uh, successful all four years. And that's because he committed really hard to doing what he really found out that he enjoyed doing. It's a big part of finding what you enjoy doing. Yeah. And you commit to one thing. Yes. Instead of five things. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, and music. But that's yeah. a different topic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, switching the attention to Jane, you're being pre-pressured uh, <laughs> and bribed with lunch into playing tennis. Mm -hmm. What was it like to... Like, why was it happy? I think that's one of the things why it was so entertaining or something, because you were talking about how you kind of got burnt out and this was something new. I had literally never picked up a racket like competitively before this, you mm -hmm. know, I would maybe hit around with a couple of people, but I had the short amount of time to get as good as I could on the team. And I think that's what drove me to really work at it because mm -hmm. I knew I only had this short time period to get really close with these people and because I'm leaving after this year, so I will not even see them again, you know? <laughs> and it's it was more about, you know, like, we didn't want Jay to join tennis because she was going to be this phenomenal tennis player. Yeah. Kind of thing. It's like, <laughs> it was more about the experience and going and playing tennis and, like, being a part of a team and doing something that you've never done. Because after a certain point in your life, 
there might not be another point you can play competitive tennis or soccer or whatever you want to do. You know, you're not going to, if you decided that you wanted to, it's a lot harder, but if you do it now, then you can at least have that experience be like, wow, I really like this. Mm -hmm. And And I wasn't expecting anything fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was just about having a good time and meeting the people and stuff like that. So you weren't, at least you could touch the ball. Yeah. <laughs> so that if, if Lucy served uh, a ball to you, you could at least... Yeah. Yeah, she could hit it back. Hit yeah. it back. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, yeah, if you're horribly unsuccessful and it's just not a good time, then there's no point in doing it. It's, you'd have to have that enjoyment first before you can get good at anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I had, a, anything other I had a lot of positive experiences with like the team and just playing with people that also enjoy playing it. And I wanted to like share that with Jane because I know Jane was I knew that Jane would enjoy having these experiences and like connections with people and she hasn't really had that before because she has never played a sport I think she got some of the joy that I got from playing with others and then some regret too because I wish I did it before that (laughs) (laughs) exactly it's great to hear that people the the sports is not just competitive about beating each other down yeah absolutely sounds like in rural sports everyone is sort of needed Yeah, and I mean, there's a very competitive aspect about it all. Like, you know, you want to go and you want to do your best, but there's another portion of it that's more about just the experience of playing a sport or, you know, doing something that you haven't done. So so you're in wrestling, Kaden. Mm, Yeah. Uh, Have you always been a wrestler? Uh, Yeah, since third or fourth grade, something like that. So it's been a long time. (laughs) But you must be really good at it. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, I'm all right. Uh, Freshman and sophomore year was kind of rough. I was a varsity wrestler for, I've been a varsity wrestler our four years. And that was more so not because I was a really, really good freshman, but it was just because we needed a 120 pound freshman. We needed a 120 pound wrestler. So, and I I was at 120 pounds. So I wrestled varsity Mm -hmm. and it was, it was very challenging because you're, you're a 120 pound kid who's a freshman who's not strong. Like you're not physically stronger than the other seniors that are 120 pounds. And so it's, it's difficult. It was very difficult freshman sophomore year, but then junior year became a lot more enjoyable as you became more successful. Uh, during those years, was it still a source of happiness for you when you say it was difficult? Yeah, it was. It was. It was a lot of fun. And then like growing up and doing the sport the whole time, it was it was a lot of fun, and I I did enjoy it all the way up. But it's a lot. It was a lot more enjoyable once uh, you start having a little more success. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is what I want to ask. <laughs> Okay, there's some wrestling about to happen in the studio right now. How could it be fun going into practice day after day, being thrown around by big varsity people for for how many days? Oh, it's a it's a long time. It's a long season. So it start the season starts in uh, you know mid November and ends in like February. It wasn't like you were just a punching bag. No, no, (laughs) I I was. uh, You know, we go in and we. You know, we practice, we drill moves and stuff like that. And we do a lot of conditioning and stuff like that. And there was a team aspect. But the thing that I liked about wrestling the most is that you can't really blame anybody but yourself when you lose. If you lose, it's entirely on you. You know, you, you can't blame your doubles partner. if you. And same thing with tennis and singles. Tennis, like, yeah. yeah, if you pa- play a really bad game, like, that's your fault. It's not because the other person was really good. It's because you didn't do as good as them. And so it's, you know, same thing with wrestling. It's a very individual sport and it's, it's never, it's not your coach's fault that you lost. It's not your teammate's fault that you lost. It's your fault that you lost. Right. And so it's, it's a, it's a very personal sport. So the whole activity of sports has a personal aspect to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not just the team, but it is also right. about personal growth and personal growth. growth. Yeah. Yeah. And now you're not afraid of people wrestling you down. Uh, <laughs> any any exactly, non-team exactly. people. <laughs> Carter, you talk about soccer. Let's move to... All right, I can uh, say... I said that friends and family, like, that's a very large source of happiness and what keeps people in the Midwest. <laughs> a lot of people have a lot of family here. Like, for me, my fa- my whole family here on my mom's side is here. Uh, or very close to here and around Macomb. And then for my dad's side of the family, there's uh, a lot of them in Burlington. Uh, my dad's parents are here in Macomb. They're all fairly close. And so it's, that's something that... It's a very good source of happiness to have. <laughs> if they are not, if you don't, ha- if you don't have friends and family in the Midwest, will you be happy? No, absolutely not. Hmm. <laughs> if you like, if I feel like if you don't have, I mean, family, you don't have to have your family here. You don't have to have your family to be happy. You can go off and live and be your own individual person without your family. But uh, you, you think know, you could do that? Yeah, I, I, I think so. Um, and of course, every young person would say the same thing like they want to everyone wants to leave their hometown and go and grow and become their own person 
like if it's it's really difficult to live and thrive somewhere if you don't have friends, regardless of where you're living. You yeah. could be living in a big city with six million people, and if you don't have a good group of friends that you can go and hang out with, then or you know you go and sit and talk with or whatever you do, it's I feel like it would be very difficult. Well, can you describe your your friends then? Do you have friends? I mean, of course, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, who who are your? What do you do with your friends? Uh, around here, it's that we drive around a lot. We just kind of aimlessly drive and listen to music, and we'll go and sit and watch a sunset or something like that, or we'll go and sit in the coffee shop for you know a few hours and do homework and stuff like that. It was kind of stuff to break up the mundanity. <laughs> It was that, definitely harder mm-hmm. before we could all drive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, really, your friends before you could drive were You're limited nervous. by how close you were. For yeah. instance, like, I walked over here um, to Lucy's house uh, just now, and we were friends. From where? We were, uh, His house I live is over just there. across the street. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I mean, it's different streets, but I just cut through someone's backyard, and I'm here. So that's why we were friends when we were younger, before we could drive, um, just because... Mm-hmm. Yeah, know, friendships are definitely dictated by the proximity when you're yeah. little <laughs> yeah yeah but now it, i'm friends with people i'd never thought i would be friends with just because mm-hmm. it takes just as long now to drive over there as it would to walk to lucy's house yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> so now it's uh, by choice yes yeah is there a difference between friends who you made by proximity versus by choice like friends made by convenience and yeah friends made by like how well you actually like your 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 house in the same kindergarten together right right (laughs) yeah i feel like there's a big difference there interesting because jane and carter and i all knew each other from like three years old and we're all still really good friends and we went to the same elementary school and we're in the same high school now all together and we were like we stuck together 17 16 years (laughs) (laughs) well there's there's also uh friends that we we were friends with too at saint paul that they're still they still go to our school but now it's all of a sudden you know they're hanging out with different people and we're hanging out with different people and it's kind of like change and grow we see each other in the hallway and we don't even acknowledge each other (laughs) yeah exactly oh yeah and i've had more of that experience than uh anything like Mm -hmm. there's a few people that i like vividly remember in kindergarten you know we were you know laughing and that's where we became friends and growing up we would birthday parties and we'd have play dates and whatever and our parents would, you know, drop each other off at each other's houses and we'd have a good time growing up. But then uh, as we got older and uh, started hanging out and making more friends uh, that as you get older by choice rather than just simply by convenience, uh, you kind of find who you, who you are individually, like who you feel like you are. Uh-huh. And then you find people that you get along with more so than rather the people you live by <laughs> once you're able to choose. Basically, once someone has a car. Then yeah, kind of. people can choose friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a little easier. It, it, yeah, it gets more easier when more people have cars. So that for you, can you describe how you find your group, the people who you get along with? Well, one of my best friends, uh, his name is Thomas Phillips. We went started uh, becoming friends in sophomore year. And we, we, we sat at the same lunch table, like me and just a bunch of group of dudes that we were all just kind of, you know, we were kind of friends. You have these big, long lunch tables in the conference. Yeah, 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 so we yeah. sat at the same table, kind mm-hmm. of close to each other. We weren't super close with anybody at that table or anything like that. And so we just kind of were sitting there and me and him would make conversation. And then eventually we, he asked me if we wanted to go outside and sit out in the bleachers for lunch uh, instead of sitting in with everybody else. So we went out and we sat in the bleachers and we found out that we liked the same music. And so we mm. hit, off, hit it off there. And so that we became better friends like that. So other uh, people may like country. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A lot of people like country music around here. We both found out that we like classic rock, like older rock music. And so we hit it off there. And that's kind of where it started. And then it snowballed there. And now he's, you know, one of my best friends. And I hadn't known him before sophomore year. And, and then you know a bunch of people who are not through other ways, right? All of you like to go to coffee shops together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, for example, that's how we met you. <laughs> 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 Thomas wasn't even going to the same school for a while. And yeah, exactly. You guys had cars so you, or a way to see each other and still hang out. So that's... Yeah. So like that whole it. situation, it was he, it started off with him. Didn't even know he existed before freshman year. He had moved here his freshman mm-hmm. year, our freshman year of high school. So we knew each other then. We talked a little bit. We, you know, we're mutual friends, I guess, mm-hmm. in air quotes. And then uh, sophomore year, he lived here. And that's when we became really good friends. And then our junior year, he moved away. He moved to a house that was just outside the school district. So we had to go to a different school. And so, like I like Carter said, we had cars and we were able to see each other and, you know, drive to each other's houses and hang out and mm-hmm. still maintain that really close friendship, even though we didn't even go to the same school. Right. By choice. Exa- yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. 
there are two things on the table. One is that as people, it's friends by choice, <coughs> and you develop consciously, not by convenience, but by intention. And, and and the second topic is what is it like to have friends who you have known for a long, long time versus a newly made friend. So okay. either topic. What it's like to have newly made friends. I mean, like I said earlier, I grown up with a few people that I in kindergarten we'd gone through the public school system together through grade school and middle school and junior high and we were friends. And then, you know, you just kind of change. Like after, you know, going through puberty and going through seventh grade, you change a lot physically and mentally. And you fit, like I said, you figure out who you are kind of. So you don't even really miss them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not a bad thing that like we're not friends anymore. You know, it's nothing malicious. It's just kind of like, you know, you, you find different interests, you have different hobbies. You just, you're very different people. And so you we've, we've moved beyond uh, Beyblades and G.I. <laughs> yeah, exa <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's different than when you were little and you had... It's a much simpler time when you're little and you have your friends it's like, oh, this kid's a boy and he likes Legos. I like Legos. Let's play Legos together. But now it's more like, oh, this person, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, this person annoys me. This person doesn't annoy me kind of a thing. So it's like, mm -hmm. it depends on just who you agree, like who you like. You look like you have something to say. Jay. Yeah. yeah. No, I... <laughs> it's like, what's it like? You, like, you know, these two people sitting next to me that you've grown up with them your entire lives and you're yeah. two of your closest friends. I mean, I think it was originally convenience. You know, we we had seven kids in our class in first grade. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. There's not much to choose from. So. <laughs> <laughs> but but I think we are really similar even then. Mm -hmm. I think we kind of hit the jackpot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys were able to grow up together and still maintain that yeah. friendship. And, not just, and you guys are obviously aren't just friends because... We were friends in kindergarten, so why yeah. wouldn't we be friends now? It's You guys actually get along and you mm -hmm. hang out and make but an I, effort to hang out with each other. Yeah, but I think it's different because we don't... I don't know, like there's... I don't know. I like, <laughs> no, no, no. I feel like that tight bond makes it easier to get along with them as you grow yeah. older. So like having already had those deep roots with these people makes it a lot easier. To but I think we're also quick to judge each other. Like in terms of like choices and stuff, because we're yeah, like, yeah, oh, sure. you know, like we know who we are. And, and everything. that just makes it, you know, even closer of a friendship, like the fact that you know each other that well. But I think that's what makes it good. I think that's what... Yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah, because I know Carter and Jane, like, in and out. I've been there at some of their best times and some of their, like, worst times. And yeah. I've been, like, with their families and they've considered me as their, like, part of their family. And my family considers them as part of their family because they've just been around each other so much. Mm -hmm. And, like, when we're younger, yeah, it's like we're friends because our parents make us be friends and yeah. like you know we met in the cheese aisle yeah. <laughs> yeah and then like as we grow older it's more okay are we going to still be friends we make we can make those decisions even before we can drive because mm -hmm. we become we as we get older we become more independent and we have our opinions on who we want to be friends of what we want in our friends having that background with them i and being so close with them i want to like continue that friendship because you know they've brought so much joy when i was like younger mm -hmm. so why end it when you yeah. know you remember that time when someone threw a towel? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Stuff like that. And I know it's cheesy, but they're like, they are siblings. Like, it's, <laughs> mm -hmm. it definitely has that feeling. Yeah. It, if it is, it, maybe it's a rural town thing, too. Yeah, the fact that you're really close with, you know, the people you've grown up the whole time with such a small class size. That can be a good thing and that can be a bad thing, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, true. It's like, a double-edged sword. In a small town, people you're not friends with, your first impressions on them are kind of lasting because you see them all the time now and exactly. if you make a bad impression you're kind of stuck with it yeah <laughs> you for, for the next the... how many years <laughs> yeah yeah so you leave if you leave if yeah if you leave if you get out <laughs> i'm really intrigued by what people do and you talk about driving aimlessly yeah. uh where do you drive to and what actually so that's what kaden feel happy about how about the rest of the three people you, you have anything to add about activities like just things we do yeah. here. Well, mm -hmm. first of all, we kind of drive aimlessly because there's nowhere really to drive to. I mean, yeah, we're the biggest town, like, however far and, away. You know, we I mean, we've, we've got a bowling together. alley and we've got, I mean, we're slowly adding fast food restaurants and stuff, but it's not, eventually you get tired of all that stuff and you yeah. run out of things to do. So, you know, you just drive around and spend time with each other. And mm -hmm. Where do you drive to? Um, nowhere. <laughs> nowhere. It's just driving around. You just drive around. You, know, it, you, drive, it really you pick a road is and you just drive aimless. straight. And you drive straight and you drive fast, you drive slow, you put on music, you listen to podcasts, you listen to funny songs, whatever you want to do. And then you turn and you're like, oh, it's time for lunch. Let's it's turn really, around yeah. and go get lunch. It's now. really more about spending time with people. Yeah. The driving is just kind of a means by which you 
get together with your friends. <laughs> it's it's interesting because I thought all of you were always very busy because you're going somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like sometimes you're extremely busy, like especially like during mm-hmm. school yeah, and during, during the week. Um, I mean, but during the summer, there's not a whole lot going on. A lot of people get jobs, but even then, we're not working full time. Right. Nobody works twenty four seven, so you're always gonna have that downtime to go mm-hmm. do something or to go do nothing. <laughs> I think being Forced is the bad word, but all of us in a car together, we can't, since we're friends, we can't just sit there like silently. So we Mm -hmm. just like driving in the country or just on like on the highway or the bypass for fun, talking to each other. We just, it just helps build our relationships with each other. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the fact that we have nothing to do gives us like more, I don't know, avenues to get to know each other. You gotta be creative Yeah, exactly. You (laughs) have to make stuff up and you kind of have to get along with somebody because what else are you gonna do yeah you can't <laughs> so so it's like a sensory deprivation tank yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. all you have is each other as stimulation how far have so jane you have been one of those rides too yeah I oh think. yeah who's the driver lucy you're oh, the lucy is the mom lucy drives her out <laughs> <laughs> she's, got a, she's got a prius so she gets like 40 miles of the gallon in town and so it's that's inconvenience but i mean it's no one ever really specific and it's never really planned it's not like oh you want to go drive around at 3 30 today no it's just kind of 3 like, 30 in the afternoon or yeah, night? yeah. Night <laughs> afternoon yeah okay no so it's, it's never anything planned so it's just kind of like hey I'm bored. You want to go for a ride? Let's just go drive around or let's go get lunch and then you drive around. Yeah. Nothing's ever really planned. (laughs) Being spontaneous and unplanned, these activities actually get rarer over time because later people have Mm -hmm. jobs, Mm -hmm. people have... Okay. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Have schools. But I want to hear from Jane and Lucy. What is it like to be in, in that car? What do they talk about? Usually there's music on. There's always music. Yeah. For the most part. That's always, like, something that breaks up the silence. One person usually, like, escalates. There are people that, like, determine, like, the feel of the car. Like, sometimes, like, different combinations of people. Sometimes yeah, they're, like, screaming. Definitely. Like, ah! Yeah, <laughs> sometimes, like, you're just listening to good music and you're, like, jumping, and, you know, you're jamming out and you're, you know, whatever. You're just having a fun time. And then other times really? you're just sitting talking about anything, really. Like, it doesn't, it's never anything specific. It's... Name one thing. Well, a lot of the times, like, someone is kind of mad or... And, uh, <laughs> you know, a darker place, and they kind of want to rant and get yeah, something yeah, off the chest. About, that, okay. about, about the what? times, it's we're all listening to one yeah. person, you know, try and tell everyone about what they're experiencing, and we're just trying to comfort them. Or right. I feel like it's school a lot of the time. A lot of times, yeah, it's at school. School-related, sports-related, extra like any extracurricular-related, band-related. Mm. Just <laughs> Is that about teacher? Is that about, like, an, maybe injury? <laughs> Uh, for school, More like later, events yeah. or activities that have happened yeah, yeah. in our school life. Like stuff that's going well, on. Or like relationships with people because like Social we drama. spend yeah <laughs> we <laughs> spend so much time oh with the God. same people there's there's bound to be drama. There's friction. Uh, sparks are flying all the time. Mm-hmm. Okay give give me one uh, <laughs> drama. You don't, don't name names. <laughs> yeah but. okay okay. Uh, like just when people like have crushes on other people like that's a lot of times what sparks a lot of drama because it's like oh, they don't know that they like them and all this stuff. It's just kind of funny. And it, like looking back on it, it's hilarious <laughs> to uh-huh. think about the drama that, you know, it's, it's in the end of the day, it's so pointless. But sometimes I think there's a lot of fake friendships with people. Mm-hmm. So I think yeah. there's like, you think you're friends with someone and then they think you're a friend or a lo- there's a lot of like, I'm nice to you, you're nice to me, but is there really a friendship or is there really a relationship right. that's deep? Because I know of these friends that are around me it's real, but like with other people, it's just, eh, yeah, I don't so, know. Like, like, how much is one of those people willing to do for the other? Like, are they right, willing uh-huh. to put their, yeah. you know, what they want ahead of their own wants, you know, if it's more important? Mm-hmm. Uh, you see, one thing about the stereotype about about your generation is that everyone is just on the iPhones all the time. <laughs> uh-huh, yeah. So, listening to your interaction, at least in this sensory deprivation car driving, <laughs> sessions it looked like a lot is happening that is actually kind of face to face yeah yeah Mm -hmm. i mean there's a lot of face to face with us and we do enjoy those like face to face conversations there's a lot of texting obviously everybody does that i mean face to face is just more personal seems a lot it's more intimate and it helps you grow that relationship better than if you were to just sit and talk on your phone over how you know over physical distance rather than being right next to somebody I almost or, think that's how these real friendships started. I don't know if this is too off topic, but like our friendships formed before we really had phones and stuff. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I mean, 
me and Carter have talked about this before, but yeah. we're kind of the generation stuck between generations. Like, we've kind of been lucky enough. We haven't exactly grown up with the phones. Like, I, re- I remember the flip phones, you know, and, right. you know, the we different phones them. coming out. <laughs> yeah. Like, I remember my parents, you know, upgrading, and then all of a sudden the phone had a keypad, and then all of a sudden it was touchscreen. And then I didn't even get my first phone until even later than that. Yeah, most of us didn't get our phone. Like, I remember getting mine in, like, sixth or seventh grade. So all the friendships that were formed before that, it had to be real. And it had to be... It had to be face-to-face. Right. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're not hanging out. (laughs) So we still... Right, we still have that value. And I feel like that's something that future generations and even this generation, but younger kids of this generation, Mm -hmm. are going to struggle with greatly because they've all grown up with that technology in their hands to avoid that face-to-face contact and connection. Like, they'll have a lot of the same problems at a younger age that we have now, like with the fake friendships and stuff like that. Like, we never had that. We You knew exactly who was your friend and who wasn't. Yeah, absolutely. What would happen if you don't have friends? In a town like this, it's well, really anywhere. It's not. It's not a great scenario. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's kind of. I mean, I don't know what you would do. Can you imagine a scenario where you don't have friends and can, could make yourself happy? It'd be like a lot lonelier. I can imagine it, but it's not. <laughs> it doesn't sound like a fun no. time. <laughs> yeah, not good. <laughs> Those car rides would be pretty lonely. <laughs> Jane? Yeah, I don't think that would constitute happiness because, like, what we were talking about before, the only things t- to do is to, or our source of happiness is hanging out with each other, not really the things we're doing. Right. So, what happens when you don't have each other? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Like you you know, gotta find something. Yeah, it's a lot better to go, you know, it's, it's a good time to go to the coffee shop and just get a cup of coffee and sit down and do your homework. But when you have a couple people with you, or if you're with one person or whatever, if you have a friend with you, it's a lot more enjoyable. Yeah, having those people makes me really happy because like people I've met through activities I've done builds that community for mm-hmm. me and I really like the community aspect of having people I know and just being like seeing like being able to like go somewhere and I know someone or they just recognize who I am just saying hello it's it makes your those little things make your day so much better than oh, going makes you feel important yeah Sometimes even, if it's, just, even yeah. if it's just like a small thing like oh hey how are you doing oh I'm doing great you know like a little checkup kind yeah of. Mm-hmm. yeah Sometimes I didn't want to do that in the coffee shop because I didn't want to bother people. <laughs> but yeah. look like that is a difference between introvert and extrovert. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, whether you want to step into other people's spaces versus, hey, other people actually expect, right? maybe. And I mean, there is a difference. Yeah. Like, <laughs> if you're just a complete stranger and you're going up and talking to somebody, or, you know, you're not even a complete stranger. Like, you kind of know them, like, you, you know their name, you went to the same school, whatever. Mm-hmm. And, you know, some people would enjoy that and some people, like, others wouldn't. Like, for me, for example, like, I wouldn't like it if someone I wasn't fairly close with just came up and started talking to me. Like, that just doesn't sound very appealing to me. You know, someone, like, anybody in this room could come up and talk to me. Like, you know, you see me at the store, like, oh, come say hi. You know, someone that you know. And so, I mean, that is kind of nice, the, the fact that you see more people that you know and uh, know at a more intimate or close level than mm-hmm. normal. I wonder if the whole thing about fake friends is because we have such a small town, so, like, everybody really kind of knows each other. Like Lucy said, you're friendly with one another, but does that really constitute a real friendship? So you have to pick. I think, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you have to make that step to... Yeah, you have to make a further commitment than just being, oh, being nice to this person kind of a thing. (laughs) So what would you expect your friend do for you or to you? real friends so they're fa- different level of friends right yeah absolutely so that the ones that actually bring you happiness look like it is a, a core group of friends mm-hmm. right are there obligations like how many of you are going to college uh, hopefully all of us <laughs> yeah. yeah all of us are and you may not be in the same spot anymore yeah yeah and that's uh, that's something that we've all like thought about i'm don't like to think it. yeah about. don't like to think about <laughs> try to avoid and put back for later yeah yeah we'll save the sadness for later for we'll save the sadness for may <laughs> okay uh, when we all leave but yeah so it's that that's gonna be a big change for a lot of people people that have grown up together especially like these three for example that mm-hmm. you know carter lucy and jane they've all grown up together and likely are all going to end up in different towns for the next four years of their lives then that doesn't mean that they're not going to be friends that doesn't mean that you know we can it's very easy in this day and age to remain friends with people And even though you don't have that face-to-face contact as much, you know, if if it is a truly meaningful and deep relationship that you care about, then uh, you're going to make an effort to see these people as much as you can. 
I have to bring my crystal ball and uh, <laughs> to predict what's going to actually happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jane, uh, you mentioned music earlier and how music is a source of enjoyment for you here in the Midwest. <laughs> yeah, music in general. Obviously, I enjoy like listening to music and discovering new artists and sharing that with other people. And like Caden said, him and Thomas, they became friends through their taste in music. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one, I think that's really cool. And one really cool thing about music is that it can open, people together. yeah, <laughs> it opens new friendships. Yeah, it definitely can. <laughs> I think that's one really cool thing about music, how you can do it on your own, like you can listen to it on your own and then also with other people. And Absolutely. like going along with that music is also an event, like something to go to, like concerts. Yeah, absolutely. Unfortunately, that's not something we really have here. Yeah, in you have to go somewhere to go to a concert. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's at events um, that you can actually go and watch, like live musicians. It's also usually just in the background at like get-togethers. Right. I feel like it's a, it's a big part. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a really big part of people's lives that whether you realize it or not. Yeah. Like everybody's life, whether you're a musician, whether you you know. Every, almost everywhere you go, there's like Jan said, there's almost always music playing. There's music playing at coffee shops. There's music okay. playing, you know, you can choose to play music whenever you want. There's, you know, just always like kind of this ambient background music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think it definitely shapes your type of person. Like, mm -hmm. So how did it shape you? I always knew, like when I was little, I watched the musicals like here at the local, at the high school, and I knew I wanted to do that. And so I entered theater, um, we do musicals every other year, so my freshman year it was a play, and so I entered the play in like preparation and practice for the musical, but in doing that I entered this community, like all the theater kids, right. and I continued doing the play even after the musical, because I enjoyed it so much, you know? <laughs> what is it about being in a play? Are you, like, do you enjoy music? Mm -hmm. You say music is a source of happiness, it's not just about listening to music, mm -hmm. but then it is about playing music or going I, to events i re i really enjoy singing i don't not so much i play the french horn you know it's mm -hmm. it's something to do <laughs> <laughs> it's a credit something, yeah exactly it looks good on college horn. applications <laughs> yeah and then there's carter on the other end but, and loves playing music i take lessons yeah. okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah but no so there's something about singing there's definitely some emotion there like people can convey things mm -hmm. through music so your your calling almost you you feel like you have that is the thing yeah not tennis no. <laughs> yeah yeah not as taking SAT exams <laughs> but it is at some point you found the thing that that's something, something that, that like similar yeah. to Carter enjoying soccer and Carter also enjoys music a lot but but I think I would mm -hmm. keep that separate from my career I don't want to intertwine the two just because that's like my one thing that I can go off and that's what I take enjoyment from and I, I want to keep that separate sure. from my work. So mm -hmm, I'm, yeah. I'm not planning on majoring or anything. Well, I know for sure in college I'm going to be in some sort of choir because again, it like it brings in people who have the same interest mm -hmm. and then I can make friends, real friends. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be one of those weird moms who like goes to choir practice. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to continue music singing in some way. I don't mm -hmm. think I'm going to become some sort of performer or anything sure but do, you, uh, do you work on that craft do you try to improve by taking lessons yeah i take uh, vocal lessons at the university actually every week yeah. every week every monday every monday <laughs> okay many of you have involvement in music kaden even if you don't do you, <laughs> yeah do yeah i do uh okay. i'm also in just uh macomb choir and it kind of started off as just something to do like everybody so in sixth grade you have to choose whether you want to be an art an art class choir or band and you can choose band and choir, just choir, just band, just art, whatever, any combination. Mm -hmm. Most people do choir. That's the biggest group of people. And then a lot of people are, it's split between choir and band. And then there's a lot of people that do both. And so it starts off as kind of something that you kind of are forced into doing. But then, it's, you know, I kind of I ended up enjoying it over uh, the course of me being a quote unquote musician, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I have a less uh, less of a connection with music than anybody else here. But so like Carter has... Uh, yeah, real good experiences. With I'm music. more um, focusing on the band side of things, and I take French horn lessons at the university. And then Lucy's experience. How's your experience with music? Um, I started out on like an alto sax, and then I got really interested in the baritone sax my freshman year. Mm -hmm. I've done some solos with it. I've really enjoyed it actually. The baritone sax is kind of fun, but I'm getting kind of bored. But I do still play the alto sax, and so mm -hmm. there's some fun things I get to play with that. And I've done um, some solos on that as well. So I've done kind of like both because I find both instrument very interesting and I've gotten enjoyment out of each one, but I've been able to do like very different things with each instrument. So 
keeps me interested. Mm -hmm. And then you were also a drum major for the last two years for the Macomb uh, marching band. So how how's that been? Like how's that a uh, different musical experience? Yeah, I got to take on some like leadership roles. Mm -hmm. I really these past couple years like been taking on leadership roles in the community and working on improving my leadership. So being the drum major has helped me and I really enjoyed helping others and leading others in a position that's different and new to me. It's mm -hmm. I've only done it for two years, so so it seems like there is also the social aspects or organizational aspects that you enjoy. By being in a band, it's different from being like a solo a musician. I know the singer-songwriter type. Saying that music is a source of happiness. They mean writing their own songs, creating the album mm -hmm. that they call their own. Uh, for Jane, it is about maybe just the activity of you, I don't know, singing and connecting to Yeah, people. I enjoy mm -hmm. using my voice. And for Lucy, looks like the craft is interesting. You have to learn them, but then you also enjoy the role mm -hmm. in a community. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah, because like, it brings me closer with other people and engaging with other people with that community aspect. I really enjoy the community aspect of a bunch of people together and interacting with each other. It's important that you're being watched, you think? Like an audience present. Mm. What, who, who watch your musical performances? Parents. <laughs> yeah, okay. the community as well they're invested into the band yeah like with the parades and stuff oh and marching band especially yeah. yeah it's more so marching band than concert band uh, yeah. with the community but yeah let me ask a question about the marching bands what is what is the point of marching band philosophically speaking uh, well I mean they were originally created kind of like another form of like cheerleading for football at our school there's actually you know we go to marching band competitions and stuff like that so it's not just about football when you are a part of a marching band do you feel like it is something because each person would just play a little part this is my my feeling what is it like to be in such a big band does does it make you feel like you are a team part of a bigger team well visually we're each like cogs in the whole machine mm -hmm. It may seem like you're insignificant, but looking like when you're looking at the picture on the field, like every person. If that counts. one person was missing, it would look way different. Yeah. I think there's times when people feel like insignificant because the whole process, mm -hmm. it's like there's a lot of work put into it and it's mm -hmm. three months of just marching band. And I think some people feel like it's insignificant, their part in it, but it is important. And sometimes it's just, it takes a while to realize how your part in the marching band is impactful to everyone else when more people when other people build other people up for it it really helps other people like realize their importance in the marching band when you like get to see your show like when you look back at well, your performance and stuff like that it, or finishing it like a whole set mm -hmm. or drill and stuff like that seeing mm -hmm. that like it just boosts you and you're like okay yeah we are in this together and we can mm -hmm. really do it and everything you can finish a project yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. i'm gonna throw out a metaphor because actually Jane came up with a metaphor. <laughs> so that each person is sort of like a cock in a big machine. But if there's no cocks... No machine. <laughs> what would... Well, the, even if one cock is missing, it kind of like the whole thing messes the whole thing up. You know, yeah. So that do you have that realization of the whole machine that you're part of that make it maybe powerful? Sometimes you realize it and sometimes you don't. It just depends on your state of mind. I mean, sometimes if you're fed up with one aspect or another, or you're tired or burnt out from like all the long marching band rehearsals, you're kind of like, why am I even doing this? Mm -hmm. But then, I mean, you always have to remember, like, it's not just about you. It's about the whole group. And the band has always been able to create a presentable performance at the end, right? <laughs> yeah. Presentable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, they're from someone who's not in the marching band and is an audience member. It's easy to tell all, all the hard work that they put in over the months and hours and days and nights that they put into it. It all it all does pay off and it looks very good and it's they always sound very good and they go to competitions they you know they do fairly well. Well, I remember watching Lucy. You were walking backward for a whole mile. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because of your instrument, right? You were just drumming but you were drumming. Drumming. had to walk backwards and not fall. Mm -hmm. If that piece of cock is not in the machine yeah. or if that cock goes badly then every the whole machine will will stop oh yeah, trip absolutely. over her yeah, yeah. <laughs> just fall yeah, yeah. and so lucy you have a photography business here and that's clearly a source source of enjoyment uh, for you and source of income as well <laughs> <laughs> well i always kind of enjoyed like taking pictures 
even with my phone, like before I had a camera, like I remember taking pictures with Jane <laughs> wherever we went. They weren't the greatest, but it kind of like, it fueled my like creativity and it helped me like fulfill that aspect of my life that I wanted to pursue. So I, my passion for photography has grown like the past couple of years, especially after I got my like first DSLR and starting a business and everything like that. I was nervous at first, but in the end, I've built so many like relationships with people. I've met other photographers. One of my best friends is also a photographer, and we take photos of other people and go places with other people and take their photos. And we have a lot of fun doing that like together and stuff like that. And there's like a whole there's other photographers in the area, and when you meet them, it's really cool because it's like, oh, you're a photographer, and mm -hmm. it gives you something to connect with people. Yeah, yeah, like you definitely find things to talk about with other photographers, and you can relate with them easily. Mm -hmm. One thing that I think people have complained about is that the Midwest landscape, people have already taken a lot of photographs. Uh, well, you took photographs of persons that is different from just landscape. What were you trying to capture, let's say, when you are using Jane as a test subject? <laughs> did, did you capture her when she was falling asleep? What is it about photography that grabbed you? It's like what drew you to photography, yeah. to become a photographer? Like what was the appeal, the original appeal? I think capturing like a person's emotions in a still image, holding it there, but also like the possibilities you can with it, that you can do with photography because there's so many things that people have already done, but there's so many things that you can still do and the creative the creativity that you can do with it is like forever and like You're limited by your own creativity. There's so many things that I wanna do that I haven't done and there's so many things that like that other people have done that you wanna like do or recreate and stuff like that and taking photos of people I think it's very interesting when there's a person in it because you can feel emotion from it or you can you can receive some kind of feeling or you know that that other person is giving off that yeah like you wouldn't get from just a landscape shot because that landscape shot would only make you feel a certain mm -hmm. way but in the picture of a portrait shot of a person you might feel a different way depending on how that person is feeling in the photo yeah is that what you get when you look at uh, photography <laughs> <laughs> yeah. lucy's photography yeah exactly um how about uh, Jane and Carter? Lucy does a lot of people images what, where they're like moving. They're in some sort of like pose. The motion of the picture makes it feel more surreal. Yeah, kind of alive. Yeah. So to speak. I see them a lot of the times on Instagram. So I always have to uh, leave a like. <laughs> <laughs> to show your support. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they are really, really good pictures and she edits them really well. And I mean, I've gone to her a few times for my own pictures, like senior pictures. Yeah. A lot of people go to her for senior pictures and other stuff like that. So Lucy, you, you have cultivated. So what year was it when you found this source of happiness? I have it on my phone. I wrote it down. I knew it would come in handy. Okay, 2017. And then I, it was December. So like quite at the end. And then I kind of started taking pictures in the spring of that. And then in that summer of 2018, I started like my business. And so, but like up until then, it was kind of like photos every week, mm -hmm. always trying something new and experimenting with different people and other techniques and everything mm -hmm. like that. Has founding this new interest changed who you are in a fundamental? Because you're also a tennis player. You do a million things. I think all of you are in many, many clubs. Founding this one thing that, like, does it really define who you are? I think some of yeah. you were talking about, oh, you found who you are. Apart. Definitely sets you apart from other people. I think there's a lot of people that are like, are you the one that takes photos? Or mm -hmm. you're uh -huh. the one that takes all those photos of those people. And you gained so, a label. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And I put a lot of my focus into that. And I've done a, been like researching photography and other people and who does it. And there's so many branches of it that people do. And so many people are great at it and everything like that. Is there a difference between doing it for business or for your personal shoots do you think the two go together yeah i think they go together i think some of it with the business though it gets very similar like i'm just kind of repeating you mm -hmm. know like senior shoot after senior shoot after senior shoot but when it's like oh i take a friend out and we go take some photos i feel like i can be more creative and do something more unique than just sit smile you know mm -hmm. for like this is for your senior photos you have to look happy and all that stuff like that where as if i just take someone out i can they can convey different emotions. They can look sad, mm -hmm. they can look happy. And, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm limited with certain types of shoots because I can't tell them to look sad if they're supposed to be graduating in May and everything like that. Yeah. So rather than a one-dimensional emotion, you want mm -hmm. the business help. So you're not sick of the business. No, definitely not. Yeah. It's just, it's just one out of many emotions that, mm -hmm. that you want yeah. to create. <laughs> but then you also 
use opportunities to try to create other types of yeah. materials. Let's move to the second part of the podcast. Let's name one great source of tension or un- unhappiness people may experience in this Midwest. Jane, would you want to start? We kind of talked about this earlier. Like, there's little things to do, and I think like the town has just enough. It has everything that you need physically, like you places got gro- to eat. You got yeah, your grocery stores. <laughs> We've got gas stations. You've got your restaurant. Got you know everything mm-hmm. that you need to keep keep on going, but. There's no luxuries in this town. There's just kind of like your basic necessities. um, And I think that's what kind of makes people itching. That's what makes people itch to leave is they Mm want to see what else there is out there. Does it make you want to leave? Yeah, because I'm (laughs) I'm kind of left wondering, well, what else is there to do? Like this is Mm -hmm. this can't just be it. You know? Yeah. And like that's it's Mm -hmm. also kind of something that gives you kind of an excuse to leave at the same time. Yeah. Not to leave and never come back, but like an excuse to travel and go, you know, have other experiences to kind of go find something to do. <laughs> so even though you value your friends and those car rides, mm-hmm. but then <laughs> you still want to leave. Yeah, yeah, just to go and find something different to do. Because I mean, no matter where you live, you're going to find, you know, you're, you're going to get sick of the things that you end up doing. Uh, you know, every day you go to the same coffee shop or whatever. Okay, let's go ice skating or whatever. So like, that's something that I guess we would do to go and uh, mm-hmm. out of town, we'd go to Peoria and we went ice skating one day. <laughs> so, you know, stuff mm-hmm. like that. In some ways, if, if people try to do different things together, maybe they will also explore different sides of people. So mm-hmm. that, let's say all of you are, are in an urban environment, you'll have more to talk about in those car rides. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. Like um, the things you're passing and, mm-hmm. oh, look over there, we should go there. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. then it's not so much just about hanging out just to hang out, and then it's kind of hang out because you're bored and you want to do something. Right. Instead of hanging out because you enjoy these people. I kind of like it here just because you can connect on a much more deeper level Mm -hmm. than if you were, you know, constantly occupied and maybe even overstimulated by always doing something instead of just, you know, slow down and just talk. Yeah, it's slower here. Mm -hmm. It goes at a slower pace here, which is kind of nice. But then sometimes I want the quicker pace life. But then everything nowadays, it's just always going. It's we're always moving and always having to go do something else. Right. Do you prefer a slower pace or faster pace? I, that's a harder question for us to answer because we haven't gone and lived anywhere else. We've only lived here. So we only know this slower lifestyle. So I feel like... That's probably why most people want to leave because right. they, you know, they don't want to just learn. know right. the slow. They're like, all right, well, now I've experienced Let's... this. Let me, you know, branch out and try. Yeah. So you want to try something new, kind of like trying a new team. Yeah, 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 kind of, yeah, yeah. Kind of like Jane trying out for the Jane. tennis team. <laughs> and, or Lucy trying, trying a new thing, picking up a new uh, instrument. So, Carter, what is your source of tension that that you have jotted down? I put down um, kind of about, like, the drama that kind of happens in a small town setting. Um, Everyone knows everything. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the small scandals are huge. And (laughs) even if it's not even a scandal, just like, oh, that person did this. Well, you know, let's like it's something to talk about all of a sudden. So everyone talks about it. Everybody wants their nose in everybody else's business. So, yeah, something that may not have been as big of a deal somewhere else um, is all of a sudden a really big deal. So it kind of makes people more conscientious and, you know, less likely likely to be themselves just Mm because they don't want to get judged by everyone yeah yeah, yeah. has it happened to you where uh, some some scandal about you has gained attention to it become talk of the town right <laughs> so to speak i don't know that i've necessarily done anything that bad i mean i've definitely experienced the judgment um especially coming from because i went to a private school for the mm. first you know for mm. elementary school yeah, and then i switched weird. over in junior high to public school I was, I was still trying to act the same way i did then it, with the smaller class size and i was more outgoing but then kind of the some of the stuff i was doing people were not exactly accepting mm. And they were all more conscientious and they were all more, you know, reserved. So I kind of had to adapt or try to adapt that style. So so in some ways, it, it, it really limit who you are uh, so that if you go against that kind of peer pressure or talk of the town, then you will become, you cannot be freely who you want to be in some ways without having consequences. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I mean... When you find a group of really good friends that you trust, then you you can kind of come out just a little bit more and, you know, be yourself and they'll accept you. But, I mean, this is just more in general when you're just, like, in school, let's say, and, mm-hmm. you know, with people you know, but 
you're not necessarily friends with you don't want to like go against the social norms mm -hmm. like you you're all kind of one big group whereas somewhere else in like a bigger city let's say there'd be more groups or smaller groups and subdivisions mm -hmm. that you could maybe belong to and mm -hmm. be accepted but in a small place there's just not as much of that so you kind of have to go with everyone else mm -hmm. this this everyone else feel that that this is lurking oh I'm definitely yeah mm -hmm. the fact the, that the fact that people uh are you know you're kind of always being watched like you know there's always going to be someone you know pretty much wherever you go like oh they're going to tell your mom that you you know whatever you know something you know so you know some stupid stuff like that too many people know my mom I, <laughs> I, like if someone sees me like speeding on the way to school um they tell my mom yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> that, oh wow and she knows so that someone is being watched is attention that mm. people experience uh lucy what is uh your greatest source of tension uh kind of like the repeating motions that we go through every single day mm. we kind of get used to a routine of our daily lives here there's since there's not much to do we kind of just we do the same things over and over again we just do the same things mm -hmm. we just kind of like do everything that we did the day before because there's nothing to change that really so that when you're in a car ride you are you have to create something mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. do but sometimes maybe you're doing the same thing again and again and it gets boring and i think some right. people want something different Oh. Yeah, and like I said earlier, like mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier, to break up that yeah. mundanity, a lot of times, you know, you'll go to a different town and you go eat different food, you know, at a different restaurant, stuff like that. So what you jotted down, Caden, is also about mundanity. Yeah, yeah. The two of you have have a similar... Uh, is that why you're doing the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, this is something different that none of us have ever done, and it's been a, it's been a fairly enjoyable experience so far. <laughs> oh, great. It's the winter time. A challenge for people more so than it is during the summertime yes because yes. <laughs> yes. it, it basically cuts the things that you can do in half yeah absolutely um, yeah like what everything outdoors um it gets maybe so cold. A, yeah, maybe a few things open up that maybe you can do outdoors now ice that it's winter but, but <laughs> we, have, four. we don't have oh we do have an ice skating rink it's yeah it's ball the four. size of this room <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> synthesis okay okay what is the greatest source of happiness family friends yeah, I would say your friends and the people Just, you choose to surround right. yourself. Finding something to do. community around you. Yeah, some Finding meaningful something. things yeah. to do. Whether it is soccer, whether it is photography, right. or music. Right? Something you can focus on and devote yourself to. Yeah, mm -hmm. your major projects. Call your own. Yeah, yeah, yeah your major projects. Exactly. Yeah, uh, and you have to find them. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You can't just um, be too inactive. Mm -hmm. right? And then the major source of challenge and tension are the mundanity. Yeah. Just having just the right amount of things, but not a, having anything extra to do. Right. There's no variation. Yeah, so that you run into a limit and mm -hmm. you almost an itching to see what else, mm -hmm. right. what uh, else is out there for you. To do. Yeah, what else is out there. It is not like you're unhappy here, but no. then right. you, you, but you're you feel like wondering. there must be something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. yeah. You feel like you're missing out, so to speak. Right. And then, uh, so that is the main source. Another main source is people's norms. There is this like tight social control, if you will, or mm. creepy <laughs> way that everything you do is being watched. Right. Someone may be watching you. Someone may tell your mom, and <laughs> and then that end up maybe stopping something before they even you could even think very deeply about it because mm. maybe you wouldn't. For for example, if Carter decides to um do something completely uh, <laughs> rebellious. Yeah, yeah. That is not even thinkable. <laughs> or, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's that, like, that small town drama. Like or everybody Lucy. knows what's going on. There's way too much risk involved. <laughs> <laughs> you be talk, talk of the town for the next 50 years. <laughs> yeah. So this is the wrap for this episode. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, and thank you for our guests for being here. We have Lucy, who is a photographer. Can you tell people what your website is? So it's Lucy Greta Photography you on Facebook. People to follow your Instagram. And Lucy Greta Photography on my Instagram. <laughs> L-U-C-Y-G-R-U-I-D-L Photography. And if you enjoyed today's show, head over to our Bandcamp website to gain access to our free resources. We also have a YouTube channel, uh, Macomb Events, M-A-C-O-M-B-E-V-E-N. TS. Our Bandcamp website is midwestcc.bandcamp.com. Basically, it is midwestcc.bandcamp.com. 
and if you have a YouTube account, you can log onto the YouTube channel Macomb Events and comment. Thank you for listening. Mm.